What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel and today we are here for our new team in our Madden 21 flashback rebuilds where we start in the 2009 season, go all the way to 2020 and reshape the NFL like you've never seen it before. If you've missed any of the other rebuilds in this series, go check that out because we've had a lot of ups and downs surprises like we have Jay Cutler playing like the greatest quarterback ever. We've had a bunch of players that are, you know, known busts in the NFL. We've made them into absolute all-stars. We've seen absolute all-stars in today's NFL do nothing in this little simulation that we are putting on. So it's always random in a good way, I guess. And today it's a brand new team. And I've been letting you guys leave suggestions in the comment section below. And I kind of pulled a slight trump card. I saw Philly enough times to be like, all right, it's not going to be completely ridiculous. It might not be the most requested team, but I wanted to do Philly and I need it to kind of address the elephant in the room, which is C4, where is the Philadelphia Eagles franchise? And it's been, it's been tough because the Philadelphia Eagles franchise was different than any of my other content. My Most of my other franchises so far this year have had storylines, have kind of been a little bit over the top. And I said that this Eagles franchise is really like me as you guys. If you guys that don't do content, don't do YouTube, you play franchises, a lot of times you'll play as your favorite team and just... Do your own thing. just and, and that's what it was for me. And I just so happened to record it. But ultimately, that series was me playing Madden as the Philadelphia Eagles. And then I would just record it. Now, I don't know if you guys have been living under a rock or not. But we were going into year two with the Philadelphia Eagles. With Doug Peterson. With Carson Wentz. And there was just too much that has happened in real life for me to continue to enjoy that series. No, Knowing that no matter what I did with Doug Peterson. With what I did with the coaches. What I did with... Carson Wentz at quarterback, it, it was just, uh, it, it, it felt, it had to be forced. Like, I was like, do I put in a storyline so I have something? Do I like, literally, I was, my, the best idea I had right now, pulling behind the veil so you guys see what's going on. I was going to be like, I was just going to make like it was a dream and I'd wake up from the dream with like where Philly is right now. But there was just no good way for me to kind of continue. There's so many massive in real life decisions that kind of just, I don't know, I'm not going to say took the fun out of it. It would take the fun out of it if I continued in that platform because it's not even like I'm playing the Eagles in my own mind it's just so far from where they're going to be in real life that for that series to be like my little Eagles franchise it, it kind of crushed it and I feel like a lot of people if you were doing your own little franchise on your own Madden game something like that happened to the team that you were doing you'd probably restart you'd probably reset so I'll say this I am leaning towards Philly being my Madden 22 franchise team because I think when you look at rebuilds when you look at just the daunting task of making a team good again. Philly's going to be top of the list for rebuild teams. They have no salary cap. Hopefully they have a good draft. But I think next year is going to be a perfect year to just start off Madden with the Eagles franchise. And the way that, I, because I'm thinking about it that way, it kind of makes it so I don't want to revamp a Madden 21 Eagles franchise because that right now is where I'm going to be going for Madden 22. We're already three minutes in. Neither here nor there. We addressed it. That's kind of what's going on. And I, I think the easiest way to understand is that that franchise, that series was for me, and I just put it up on YouTube. And I think a lot of other people, if you were doing your favorite team, and your coach and your starting quarterback were no longer there, you're going to be like, well, you know, even if you just you fire your coach and then just trade your quarterback, it's still going to be like, well, that's not what I was setting things up for. It was a, I, I don't know, man. It, it was just, it's not... It's not really what I want to do at this point. If that's if that's an answer that not a lot of people want to hear right now, I'm sorry, but that's just where I'm at when it comes to that series. Uh, we got the webcam going today. You know, the reason why it's sometimes you see the webcam, sometimes you don't, is that basically the webcam decides if my computer's going to chug along or not and give me some frames and, and not give the video quality that I want to present on my YouTube channel. So a lot of times I will start videos with the webcam and if the thing starts chopping up a little bit, I'll just ax the webcam when I'm editing it so it takes a little less stress on my computer. I'm trying to upgrade the process to the RAM. I've been on social media trying to get you guys to help me get improvements for my PC. Parts are kind of tough to get right now. So in case, I'll probably just ax the webcam after this little introduction part just so that we can make buy. Uh, hopefully sooner than later. And it's 100% like as soon as literally I can order it to Canada, I'll be upgrading the PC so I can do what I want whenever I want in my videos and not really be at the mercy of my slightly underwhelming machine. So we are here. Now we go four minutes into the intro. We are here at the beginning of the 2009 season. So what you're going to see for ratings are almost identical to what you would see if you were loading up Madden 10 
and in the Eagles. And you're trying to see what you're doing in the Eagles rebuild, in the Eagles franchise. This is what's going on. So at the quarterback spot, we have Donovic McNabb, who is an 88 overall superstar. And Donnie was, you know, I got a McNabb jersey, man. McNabb was really the first big Eagles quarterback when I became a fan. This was, in real life, his last year as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. They eventually traded him to the Washington football team, and they went with Michael Vick, fresh out of prison, as their starting quarterback. And I'm not going to lie, I may very well follow in that. I, I think Michael Vick is going to be a lot more entertaining to use when I do hop in to get game plays. And at this point in time, like comparing Michael Vick in 2010 to Donovan McNabb in 20, 2009, Michael Vick was immensely a better player. So we do have more questions than answers at quarterback, and I'm not going to completely commit to one just yet. Uh, we'll, we'll probably sim a couple games, see if Donnie is playing very well. If he's not playing well, we can make that move with Michael Vick. Also, shout out to Kevin Call. Kevin Call, one of the biggest finesse quarterback trades in NFL history. Traded him away to the Arizona Cardinals. We got Dominique rogers Camardi in like a first-round pick or something like that, first or second-round pick. We got a prim DRC at that point in time was like one of the better young corners in the NFL, electrifying athlete. And we got a top premier draft pick for a guy that absolutely was ass. So that was good for the Philadelphia Eagles. At running back, we have Brian Westbrook getting you know, a little bit long in the tooth here at 30. Um, still really good. Still one of my favorite running backs in Eagles history. But this is a little bit of the change of the guard that we get to play out in this rebuild as we have the rookie LaShawn McCoy to pit. And most Eagle fans today, I know a lot of people that are watching this that are Eagle fans, you probably identify as LaShawn McCoy as like the best running back you've seen play for Philadelphia. Even though I, I don't know, that's like a really, really good debate. Who was better at their peak, LaShawn McCoy or Brian Westbrook? Because stylistically, very similar styles. I think Brian Westbrook was a little bit more of a receiving threat, whereas LaShawn McCoy was, you know, he could obviously catch the ball, but his was a looseness, making guys miss, breaking ankles, and everything in between. So at least when you look at the landscape of this team from the running back spot, we're good. We have the old guard here in Brian Westbrook who we can run to the ground. We're not going to cut him so he can go finish his career with the 49ers. I'm going to try to let him finish him here in Philadelphia, but LaShawn McCoy is the future. Uh, we have Leonard Weaver at fullback. He was always a really solid fullback. Uh, kind of like, I don't really know, man. He was kind of ahead of his time. Leonard Weaver wasn't really a blocking fullback. He was more of like an offensive weapon for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was like one of those guys, like, we do short yardage. He would always get a lot of numbers. He was like a borderline rosterable fantasy option as a fullback, which is kind of weird. The thing Kyle Juszczyk, kind of, I guess, when you think of Leonard Weaver, if you didn't get to see him play for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he played for Seattle, too. He was good. Uh, at wide receiver, we have Deshaun Jackson entering his second season out of California. Already with that superstar dev, one of the best deep threats in the NFL. 95 speed, 98 acceleration. And uh, that's going to be awesome getting able to play the career of Deshaun Jackson here in Philadelphia. You have Jeremy Macklin, who was an incredibly surprising pick for Philadelphia. A lot of people had him as one of the top two wide receivers. I think it was a draft. Was it with Crabtree? <laughs> was it Crabtree, Macklin, and Hayward Bay? Like those were the guys that were kind of there. And then the Raiders surprised everybody. I think it was Crabtree. I can't remember 100%. Let me just go check, actually. Is he on the Niners? Yes, it was. It was. It was Crabtree, Jeremy Macklin, and Darius Hayward Bay. And then everyone thought Crabtree was number one, and Darius Macklin was number two. And those were your first guys that, you know, you'd go take in the first round. And then the Raiders took Darius Hayward Bay, which no one thought was going to happen. Classic Al Davis picked the fastest 40 yard dash guy. And then Philadelphia got Jerry Macklin. Jerry Macklin, while. You know, definitely not prolific with the Eagles. He had a couple good years. He was a solid, strong wide receiver too. And I think long-term, being able to build a Sean Jackson and Jeremy Macklin, that's going to be cool. We had White Lightning here, Kevin Curtis, who was a really underrated deep threat. Jason Avant, who, you know, was what he was. Kind of unreliable in most circumstances. But if it was third and long and you needed a first down, Jason Avant was always there. And then we have Hank Basket. I don't know. I don't remember he was a super hot wife or something like that. He was on the... I don't know. Either way, the wide receiver core, it starts and finishes with Deshaun Jackson and Jeremy Macklin. Tight end, we have Brent Selleck, 74-24. I mean, he's one of those guys that like was always kind of underrated in a Madden game. Like, I was surprised he only had, I think he started as a 73, went up overall at one point from some of the preseason. But, I mean, he's an Eagle legend. And, you know, him and, him and Zach Ertz for, like, modern-day Philadelphia Eagles, they're like, you know, they're the creme de la creme for the position. We're hoping Dallas Goddard can add his name to that list. But Brent Selleck saw that 74 doesn't really do him justice. Hopefully, he can develop, maybe catch a dev trait here or there. 
On the offensive line, we have Jason Peters, 95 superstar, one of the best left tackles in NFL history. I think he's going to be, I don't know if I can say he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I'd be shocked if when all said done, Jason Peters doesn't emerge as a Hall of Famer. We have Todd Harriman's the Todd Father at left guard with an 82. At center, Jamal Jackson with an 83. At right guard, we have Sean Andrews. Since I've been a fan with the Philadelphia Eagles, Sean Andrews is probably the biggest what if. Like, he was one of those guys that, I don't know if it was every single year, but he was like, he was in year five at this point. He was a 92 overall. And I'd say at least four of those five years, he made the Pro Bowl. He was an amazing guard for the Philadelphia Eagles. Looked like the next, like he was, like if you, at this time in 2007, 8, 9, 10, in that range, like Sean Andrews was making, like if you're making your dream team of current NFL players, he was making it. He was insanely strong and strangely powerful, but he had some uh, demons out the field, some mental health and, and everything like that in between. And unfortunately, we never got to see really just how good, how prolonged the success could be with Sean Andrews which is very, very unfortunate. Like, if I'm listing the top five what-ifs, what could have been for the Philadelphia Eagles, Sean Andrews might be at the top of that list, man. He was he was very, very good. It was unfortunate how everything kind of finished out there. Uh, we have his brother, Stacey Andrews, at right tackle. He's a 79, so overall, offensive line is strong. When we flip through the defense, it's not as good, definitely. Uh, we have Jaqu Jaquay Parker at defensive end here. He's a 76, one of the most underrated Eagles of all time. I got his jersey. We have Trent Cole. At right defensive end, he's an 87 star. Uh, was one of the better speed rushers at that time in the NFL. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to get after it with him. We have Howard here. Jason Babin, uh, who came in with the wide nine eventually. Oh my God, I hate this guy. No, 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 if you're an OG of the channel, you know what happened. Jason Babin came to my very obscure Canadian town. And uh, I wanted to meet up. And some things, so, you know, some stuff happened. And we'll just say that. And uh, basically, guys, guys, kind of, uh, he's just an ad, he's a dickhead. He was, I was like, hey, man, Eagles fan. He was doing like some supplement thing here. And I was like trying to reach out. This is like very early in social media when this happened. And I was like, hey, man, can I get an autograph? I'm a diehard Eagles fan. I wasn't even a huge fan of him. He was incredible. But he had like 13, 14 sacks the year before. So I was like, sure. This is like a once in a million chance that a Philadelphia Eagle is where I live. And he's like, yeah, man, let's meet up. And then he kind of goes to me. Uh, and I was like in high school at the time. It was just, I don't know. It was, it was just weird. So fuck him. Uh, D-line, we got Mike Patterson and Broderick Bunkley. Those guys were solid. The uh, rest of the D-line's not great. And in terms of ceilings, I don't know how much further these guys are going to go. But they're still 25, 26. You never know. They could cap out low 80s and be a solid rotation there. Uh, we have the veteran Will Willerspoon at left outside linebacker, 79. He's productive. He was really good. I think he's spent most of his career with the Rams. But he did come over to Philadelphia near the end. Uh, middle linebacker, we have the Axe Man. Jeremiah Trotter, middle linebacker. Stuart Bradley here as well. Probably should be going with Stuart Bradley. He was always one of those guys. Like, he's, uh, if you think of, oh, what, uh, Singleton. Alex Singleton right now. Like, this was Alex Singleton back in the day. Stuart Bradley is always one of those guys that's like, man, if he could have stayed healthy. I mean, Singleton hasn't had injury issues. But if he could have stayed healthy, I think Stuart Bradley could have been, like, a really solid starting linebacker in the NFL. But injuries... Kind of caught up. He's like the combination of like Jordan Hicks and Alex Singleton. That's what you got here in Stuart Bradley. Uh, and obviously Trotter, just a veteran at this point, kind of slow, but one of the greatest linebackers Philly's ever had. Right outside linebacker, not much better. Akeem Jordan and Omar Gaither. In the secondary, we have Asante Samuel, who's an absolute ball hawk. We gave him, he has a superstar X Factor. That was right from the base roster. I didn't give it to him, and I wasn't going to downgrade him because in his prime, Asante Samuel was the best ball hawking corner in the NFL in 28. Still very much in his prime. So that is very good. We have Sheldon Brown here, 86. Ellis Hobbs, 76. Joselio Hansen and Jack Akiguanu from Wisconsin. Uh, man, he was supposed to be another big 1F. He was like one of those guys, like first, second round corner. Then he absolutely like shredded his knee, I think. Philly got him late. And he just, he just can never, you know, uh, you know, recover in his career. But from a secondary standpoint, Sunday Samuel and Sheldon Brown, very happy with all of those moves. Free safety, we have Sean Jones, Quentin Depps, you know, eh. This is post Brian Dawkins, unfortunately. Strong safety with Quentin McKell, who's solid. Uh, I tried to like nerf him. He had like an 87 in the base game. Like guys that I did just absolutely disagreed, like they were too high. I would nerf them a little bit from this base rating. That's why I'm not saying it's identical to Madden 10. But McKell was always solid, serviceable for sure. And the special teamers, we have David Akers at 77 and Sav Raka with a 69. So overall, we're at 82 overall, 87 offense, 77 defense, very one sided. From a roster standpoint, but with that 87 offense, definitely have aspirations of competing early in this rebuild. 
And he, yeah, even here in, in year one, I, I think that once we kind of figure out where we're going at quarterback between Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick, we could be a playoff team. We should be, and hopefully a playoff team here. Let's generate our best lineup. Peters, yeah, everything looks good there. It, it's just going to be, what are we doing at QB? We'll let Donnie, Donovan McNabb get the opening couple games, but if we're disappointing, if we're below 500, if he has, you know, five touchdowns, four interceptions, or something like that, absolutely we will consider making Michael Vick our starter at some point this season. But if it's Donovan McNabb's job to lose, it's Donovan McNabb's job to lose. And if he can fight off Michael Vick, then that will be good for everybody. So, Jesus Christ, 15 minutes in. Let's get into year one of the Philadelphia Eagles flashback rebuild here in Madden 21. So, five weeks into the season, to kind of give us a good picture of where the quarterbacks are at. We're three and two, which I would say... It's not bad, maybe tad underwhelming, but we're tied for first in the East. I was like, all right, three and two though. Let's get Michael Vick, see what Michael Vick can do. But when you look at Donovan McNabb, hasn't really done enough to get benched. I mean, you look at the numbers, eighth in yards, 20th in time. Eighth, eight is low for Tuddies, but only two picks is not too, too bad. So I, I'm going to give him to the bye week. And if the bye week's not great, then we will obviously, we'll be past the trade deadline. So we won't be able to trade him yet. But if things aren't shaping up, things aren't getting better by week nine, I think that will be the time that we make the, you know, consider it the jump off point for going to Michael Vick as our starter. So the bye week of the 2009 season, I said we'd reevaluate. We were three and two. We've lost three in a row. We're three and five now. Last place in the NFC East. Don McNabb is still not playing bad, but he's not elevating the team. The team is not responding to Don McNabb. We're at that Point right now where Eagle fans are starting to doubt Donovan McNabb. They're starting to doubt Andy Reid. So while Donovan McNabb is playing well enough that he has some trade value for sure for the offseason, even though he's going to be a veteran at this point, uh, I, I think from a team performance standpoint, if we were to ever have a, a point to give Michael Vick a chance, it'd be a route now to see if he can elevate everyone else around him to start getting some positive results to go the way of the Philadelphia Eagles. It's just three straight losses. The last two losses have been to the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. We're slipping into the division. Maybe, just maybe, Michael Vick will be the kind of guy that, that provides the spark that we really need. So I feel like the perfect opportunity now, unfortunately, for, uh, you know, myself, I guess I, I am a Donovan McNabb, Donovan McNabb fan. Our first gameplay will be this Week 10 game against the Giants with Michael Vick as a starter. So maybe it's going to be unfair because we didn't actually get to hop in and play with Donovan McNabb. Um, but I, I feel, you know, now now's the time to make the switch. And we're going to see what Michael Vick can do. And hopefully he looks pretty good. We got some contracts, some business to take care of. Before we hop in, I don't foresee us wanting to re-sign a lot of our impending free agents. And a lot of times, too, the most important spot, especially when you're starting with, like, a heavily customizable roster that we are for this rebuild, for this series, is that a lot of guys will pop up in that final free agency window, like, in the off season. That will we definitely have to double check because this might not be the full landscape and scope of players that we can look at to retain. I will say right now, Jamal Jackson at center is definitely you know worth that two-year deal. If we'll take that start at center, only 27, not gonna have to see any regression. I think Mikel also not that bad, but he's probably peaked. My kind of approach is like we'd be burning you know, kind of uh, a draft pick, a premier draft pick to get started. We don't have depth behind Mikel. So let's see if we can get him on a four-year. Three-year might have been more ideal, but we got him locked up four-year deal. Broderick Bunch is interesting. He's only 25. Avant's 26. Uh, but I feel like at this point, Jackson and Mikel are probably our best contracts to hand out at week 10. So it's three and five Eagles, four and five New York Giants. Michael Vick getting his first start out of prison. Version 2 of his NFL career. Let's see what happens. So I felt like the most fitting way, like when I think of Michael Vick in the Philadelphia Eagles uniform, I think of these unis. And if you're an Eagle fan, you know what I'm talking about. You know these classic greens. Last time Philly actually had like somewhat remotely cool uniforms. So let's pop them on. Give you a little bit extra luck, extra juice to the squad in Michael Vick's first start. That's a great run from Brian Westbrook to start the drive off. Right in the middle of the field, Brett Selleck on third and long makes the conversion and we're in a Giants territory. Okay, we don't have Michael Vick. He doesn't have the scrambling quarterback abilities. 
just yet. I don't I don't know if at 29 I'm going to be able to get him to get like 90 overall to get the new abilities. But uh, yeah, you know, we got Truz. Oh, that's a great grab, Jerry Mag. We got Truz, and hopefully we can get Escape Rider sooner than later. Oh, let's go. Come on, B-West. B-West finishes it off. He's so used to just going down at the one to kill the game off. At this time here, we're like, hey, you can get in there, 36. You can get in there, 36, and get the first TD of the game. Fifth of the year. Behind that excellent offensive line, even though I don't know what the fuck 79 was doing. Great block, Todd Father. Third and a mile. Third and 22. We got D Jacks at the top. Oh, we go to Selleck. He gets not really, I mean, he's not a good athlete. He makes the catch. He's not going to get you much more yards beyond that. Ah, let's just kick the field goal. Oh, yeah. Just too much time at the back. Credit where credit's due. They are not letting me hit Deshaun Jackson because it's so badly I want to just hit a, a D Jack 70 yard touchdown pass. But you're taking away Deshaun. Things across the middle are going to be open 33 yards. Brian Westbrook. Nice cheese. How can Michael Vick operate the slants cheese? Probably fairly well. As we go to Matt, oh, we get destroyed. Very little time. Pressure, heat was on. They got, you know, Greg Williams, Dr. Heat as their DC. Jesus. Macklin again, he just gets popped by the linebacker. That's almost intercepted. That would be one of the most ridiculous, lame interceptions in history if that actually happened. Well, we have to uh, settle for another field goal. And that is full kudos to a fairly active and aggressive Giants defense. Luckily for us, their offense can't do shit. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're just... Eh. I'm getting clouded by nostalgia and not taking this for what it is. Right now, our deep passes are not working. And we just tried to force that to Jeremy Macklin. We got picked off by Sam Madison, the veteran. And the Giants' first touchdown. We have 51 seconds. Let's try to get some points. Man, I love Michael Vick just not playing. Like, can't break a sack. Awesome. Love Michael Vick not being anything like anyone thought Michael Vick would play like in Madden. Whoa! Could have been a touchdown. Could have been a pick six. Third and ten. Here we go. Yeah, let's go screen. Let's go something kind of simple. And if it works and it, we execute it, Brian Westbrook is more than good enough to make this a touchdown play. We got the pancakes out front. The oh, my God. Oh, my. 73 Sean Andrews just murdered somebody. We got the first down. Wasn't the tutty. But I got to see that pancake box so many times. Do linemen let you down in Madden in particular on screen plays? Not this. Watch 73. Knocks a guy on his ass there. And then he looks for another one. Can I get the pancake? You're not going to show me that? Oh, I got to see that, man. That was unreal. Watch 73. It's Sean Andrews, right? So he, get, he comes here, right? And then just pick. Obviously, you know, that's a blitzing. That's a DB corner of some sort. Uh, Phillips. All right, that's easy. That's light work. But let's get to the second level. He wants to, he wants another head. And he's looking here at 31 and murdered. Something. Shady McCoy, rookie, gets in untouched. Got to use the run game a little bit more. Like, you know, it's fun to throw with Michael Vick. But our run game is on point. It's our advantage in this game so far. We got to stick with it if we want the win. And we got the win. Wasn't as prolific as we have you know would have liked it to be. With uh, Michael Vick in particular, slightly underwhelmed, but we you know without him having escape riders, you know, there's going to be limitations, and this is alternate reality. Maybe Michael Vick never has the 2010-2011, which is next season's MVP-type season, and he doesn't look as great coming out of prison and all that stuff. But uh, I did okay with Deshaun, did okay with Brian Westbrook, and got the win. Nice win. Hopefully he can, you know, with Michael Vick now under center, go on a little bit of a late-season playoff push. Okay, we uh, stack and follow up that Giants victory. Week 11, 27-10 over the Browns. And Mike Patterson getting off the normal dev. Up to a star dev trait for our, you know, he was an average D tackle. Now he has a chance to become a good D tackle. Okay, we're just going to finish this year out live because it's almost, I'm not going to say too good to be true. But we started here. We had a week 16 victory over Dallas, 31-15. Brent Selleck 
went up Dev Trey, which is great. He's one of those players that if you're watching this as an Eagle fan, it's nice to see him succeed. But we're now first place. Looking at our team schedule here. These are all Donovan McNabb's games after the bye week. Here's where we start playing. And since we've made Michael Vick our starter, he is five, what, four, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one. And he's taken us from last place in the division to first place in the NFC. Now, I assume if we're trying to, like, you know, peel back and, like, why, why is that? Maybe it's something to do with the fact that Michael Vick has an X factor and that, that kind of plays up in the sim. I don't know, but he's playing very good. As you can see, you got NFC Offensive Player of the Week here with four touchdowns against Dallas. And this Week 17 game against Washington very much looks you know, kind of win and, and you're in, lose. And, I mean, there's a chance that one of these teams could be in the wild card. So I'm thinking we hop in. We just sim it, but we get a first-hand seat to see if we can beat Washington and get into the playoffs here in the 2009 season. All right, let's go. Let's go. It's snowing. You know, I don't really know who that weather kind of favors, but doesn't look, uh, you should be Michael Vick, right? Make Puts guys on skates when it's regular grass. When you throw some precipitation on the ground, it could uh, it could go your way. But this first half is not looking good at all. Ugh. We get a touchdown here? We can't even score a touchdown. Come on. What are the odds that like Michael Vick's undefeated until we hop in and try to show it? And then he can't get a win. Fourth that I'll come in. Fourth and four. One of the odds I try to scramble like Michael Vick should be able to. And I don't get it. Probably fairly likely. All right, snow game. Let's see what we can do here. Kevin Curtis, white lightning, and he fucking drops it. Has it. Just decides, eh, not going to make the catch. Got a chance to go down the field here. Ooh. Fourth down, another fourth down. Fourth and 10 on the 23. Sure, we'll take another four vert stop. Full kudos to my defense. We've got Brent Selleck now, the new star dev tight end. Yeah, it's not the him or Macklin's going to be open here. There's going to be a space. That I, I think a first down is going to be attainable. And it's Jeremy Macklin. Oh! Is that going to get reviewed? Guess not. Got another chance. Get it. I hate this game. We get the last second touchdown, and of course, there's just like 30 seconds left. They're going to go down the field and kick a field. Well, you know, it was almost something super exciting, and then Madden decided just to be Madden 21, and we lost. Even with that crushing defeat of Madden trying to like force me to go play Ultimate Team or the Yard or something, because they're just there's no way the Sims that predictable. Uh, we still made the playoffs, nine and seven. Cool. Get to go and play uh, in Minnesota. Sure. All right. It'll be a fun time. Nine and seven, second place in the NFC East. At the end of the season, let's see our dev traits. We had a couple of hidden devs on the offensive side. Lashawn McCoy, superstar. Jerry Macklin was a star dev. What a draft this was. This was probably like the last, maybe not the last, but it was one of the last good Eagle drafts. Um, so Shady and Macklin looked pretty good. I don't think we had any hidden devs on the defensive side of the ball, which we did not. Uh, statistically speaking, obviously our stats can be a little bit skewed. We've had two quarterbacks, but McNabb went 2,000 yards, pretty much the same amount of games. 2,013 and three for McNabb, 2,419 and seven for Michael Vick. Uh, from a running standpoint, obviously, this is always going to be kind of like, you know, QBs don't scramble in Madden for some reason. I, I don't know why they, they don't still. I'm obviously, it used to be worse. Like, when you look at this, 133 Michael Vick, there was a point in time in Madden where you're like, that's amazing because, there's you know, uh, before countless patches, Michael, you know, Lamar Jackson was getting eight rushing guards in a single year. It just boggles my mind that they haven't figured this out because your cover athlete is Lamar fucking Jackson. That's literally like, oh, yeah, you know, I got uh, the new NBA game with Steph Curry. And then in the sim, Steph Curry's like, you know, 20% three, uh, fucking three-pointer shooting. Like, it just, make your, make, it's, it shouldn't be that hard. People, like, I've gone on a rant about this recently on, on social media. And people said, like, the tendency system in 2K is what they need to have here in Madden. Because it's just, uh, you know, it kills the immersion. It's stupid. It's, you know, you're Madden. 
Everything should be as almost as authentic as you possibly can make it. How has it been this long that scrambling quarterback numbers have been an issue without really having a proper fix? Come on. Come on, dudes. Uh, put literally one intern, one programming intern on fixing this. There you go. Problem solved. Sean McCoy, 509-97 Brian Westbrook. I'm happy with both those numbers. Uh, receiving 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns from Jeremy Macklin. Good God. 9-7 to Sean Jackson. Happy with that. 8-4 and four Brent Selleck. Happy with that. Um, defensively, we got Jeremiah Trotter here. Led the team 115 tackles, 6 sacks. From the veteran, over 100 tackles for Sheldon Brown. We had 9 sacks, 10 TFLs from Trent Cole. And on the interceptions, Ellis Hobbs with 3. We'd like to see Asante Samuel get a little bit more, but it is what it is. Yearly awards MVP went to Tom Brady. We don't have anybody there. In the NFC, I'll play the game with Aaron Rodgers. You have to play the game with Bobby Carpenter. Jeremiah Trotter coming in at number six, which is great for, what is he, 32, 33, 34? Somewhere in that range. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Josh Freeman. Macklin coming in at number three. LaShawn McCoy at five. Defense Rookie of the Year went to James Laurinaitis. Oh, what a rush. Um, a lot of censorship there. How is that still not fixed yet in Madden? I don't know. I have some fucking pride in your work. Running backs. Uh, Brian Westbrook coming in at number six. Reggie. Censored Bush. Wide receiver went to Jerry Mack, which is that's a rookie. That's a rookie. We might be in store for a dev trade. He's star dev. Could be superstar dev once we get past the uh, Pro Bowl week. Sean Andrews, Jason Peters making lineman of the year on the D-line. Nothing there. Linebacker. Probably Trotter at some point. Yeah, he's there at number eight. Defensive back. Nothing. Kicker. David Akers at number two. So some good individual success. Team success. You know, I'm still a little bit cheesed about that week 17 loss. But we made the playoffs, and we get to kick off our playoff run here against the 11-5 Minnesota Vikings. All right, let's go, fellas. Get a dub, man. Get this dub. It's Jeremy Macklin, Deshaun Jackson, Air Raid, whatever you want to call it. Minnesota gets the first score of the game. We go down and equalize, tied up at seven apiece here in the second quarter. Moving the ball fairly well against their defense, having to settle for a field goal here. Uh, not the business you like to do in the sim in particular. And halftime we go in, tied at 70 to piece. Everything to play for here in the second half. Philadelphia does have a pretty good record against Minnesota in the playoffs. I literally only remember the one game in 2017, but that was a one of my all-time favorite Eagle games of all time. Of all time. Uh, fourth quarter, kick the field goal, go up. 3-2017, our defense trying to make a stand, cannot. Minnesota gets a touchdown, so we have a minute three to go down and try and win this thing. And we do. We get the touchdown. Ice in his veins. Michael Vick. 400 yards, three touchdowns. Huge game, Jeremy Macklin. He's unstoppable. That connection is filthy as the Philadelphia Eagles are moving on here. All right, divisional round. We got the 49ers here. They're not a bad team, but I definitely, on paper, we are stronger. So this should be a game I'm expecting us to win. And it's just, you know, stop Frank Gore and such, so on and so forth. 7-7 seven seven after the first quarter. Very similar to how the last game started. No one team pulling ahead. Get that field goal cushion. We just see Michael Vick and Jerry Macklin to continue just to be like the best wide receiver quarterback combination in the NFL. Second half, we're up six. Just good. Hold the Niners to a field goal attempt. Still up three deep in their field here. Go up six again. So the fact that a touchdown can completely shift this game is having me a little bit worrisome here in the third quarter. Niners get the touchdown. Go up four. Defense needs to get a stand. Which they do buck 43. We start on our two. 98 yards to win this game. Let's try it. Let's try You know, fourth and 22. Bomb to Deshaun Jackson. Let's, you know, let's try it. They give off coverage, which is not great. But if our offensive line will have Brian Westbrook pass, if our offensive line could hold up, I'm still just going to chuck it to Deshaun. We have more than enough throw power, more than enough speed. Michael Vick, like 96 throw power. Oh my God, who's that corner? Oh, Deshaun! Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Burn the timeout. Oh, let's go. See, that corner head was faster than Deshaun Jackson. But Deshaun makes the jump ball grab. Oh, yeah, baby. No, don't lose it. Oh, thank God. 23 to 20 on the back of Michael Vicks. Just laser. Absolute laser to Deshaun Jackson. Z Jack, seven catches, 137 yards. Philadelphia. Are right, moving to the NFC Championship game. What a run they are on right now with Michael Vick under center.
And the NFC Championship game, how fitting. Since I've been an Eagle fan, the one team I never want to see Philly play in the playoffs is the New Orleans Saints. So maybe we'll have better luck in the Madden Sim because it hasn't been particular. I don't think Philly's like... The Saints and the Seahawks are like the two teams in the NFC as an Eagle fan. Like we just... I don't know what it is. Can't beat them. And we're looking good in the first half. Up 14-6. It's going to be a high-scoring game, I think. But, Don, you know... My Michael Vick is on another level right now. And I think that when you have Michael Vick playing on another level, it's kind of like Cam Newton playing on another level. There's just only so much you can do to stop it. And a lot of it's going to just not work because he's, he's just insane athlete. There's just, he's just the best guy in the field. It's, it's like high school football. The best athlete wins no matter what. Doesn't matter what you do unless you hurt him. So we're only down seven here in the fourth quarter. Super Bowl on the line. Oh my God, he nails it. 27-27, 249 defense. Trying to get a stop. 99 yards, let's go. Oh, we had a punt it. We get another chance, though. Buck seven to go. Field goal would put us in. Oh, it's going to overtime. Come on, yes! We get the touchdown in overtime. We're going to the Super Bowl year one, boys. What was that score? Who gets it? Who gets Brian Westbrook screen pass 23 yards from Michael Vick, Philadelphia, going to the 2010 Super Bowl? And we head to the Super Bowl. That's, that's as intri interesting of a Super Bowl as it really comes. 15-1 and one New England Patriots. I will say we do enter the Super Bowl with a now superstar dev, Jeremy Macklin. He's been incredible here in this rookie season. Wide receiver of the year. Completely deserved. Pair that with a Sean Jackson. Long term, the health of this squad is very good. But we got the 15-1 and one New England Patriots. A near perfect record. Getting an idea of what their squad looks like. They got all bomb Tatey here at quarterback. Tom Brady and Randy Moss. Mankins, Wolfork, Burgess, Wes Walker, Adelius Thomas as an edge rusher there. It's a, whew, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. But winning the Super Bowl year one with Philly to kick off a 10-plus year rebuild, that's about as good of a start as you can get. All right, come on. It's Patriots. Patriots, Eagles. This time, this will be the, what, the second time they've met. They met in, oh, I can't remember the year, 04, 05. Patriots are hella good, though, man. 15 and 1. That's even, even for like a CPU sim team, 15 and 1 is really difficult, really uncommon to see. Uh, but we're, we're going to it, man, toe to toe. 10 10. Michael Vick's on point, standing there, going blow for blow with Tom Brady. I'm not liking the fact that, you know, we're not scoring a lot of points here. We're moving the ball well. But once we get into Patriot territory, they're kind of, you know, kicking our ass a little bit. 17-10. Tom Brady. Oh, they get it. Buck 54 to go. No, no, no. Oh, no. That's not good. Oh, my God. It could go to overtime. And David Akers. I wish I could just watch this. David Akers makes his field goal. We're winning the Super Bowl year one. Yes! Okay. This, as an Eagle fan, you know, while it is slightly lame-whelming... That's not going to take us a bunch of years to build this Eagle squad out to win a Super Bowl. The fact that we were last in the division, switched Michael Vick to the quarterback, and that was the catalyst to going from last in the division to the Super Bowl champions in the very first season of a rebuild. What is going on with Andy Reid's head? Oh, my God. That's awesome, man. Michael Vick was unreal. Like, now, see, it's one of those things where sometimes if you win this early, it's like, well, geez, where's the challenge? Who cares about the rest of the years? I am very much taking the approach of like, if this is what Michael Vick did in half a year, like, are we going to be able to replicate what Michael Vick did as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles here in the coming seasons? I can't wait. Can't wait. So we get the Super Bowl title there. Awesome. So many guys on this team, like Jeremiah Trotter deserved a Super Bowl. Brent Selleck. I mean, well, he got the Super Bowl, but he deserved one earlier. Deshaun Jackson and LaShawn McCoy deserve Super Bowls as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. Dante Samuel. Even though he's you know, half an Eagle, half a New England Patriot. Still happy to see it there. We got Michael Vick. Hoist that bad boy up. Philly are Super Bowl champions. And what in the hell is going on in my coach's head? Oh, Jesus. Come on, Madden. Come on. Let's look at the stats here. In this rule for the Eagles. Michael Vick, clean game. I mean, for MVP, that's, you know, I mean, 30 or 37 is very good. 81% completion percentage, very good. Nothing too crazy from a rushing standpoint. Shady got a touchdown there. Selleck had a nice game. Macklin with a continue. Just to, I can't wait to see what Jeremy Macklin can develop into. He's doing all this as a rookie. We got two and a half sacks from the hunter, Trent Cole. 
Like seeing that, boys? Super Bowl title? Let's kick off into the offseason now and figure out what's going to be the best way to defend our title. It's kind of cool. The new uh, final franchise up. we get season recap. So it's Philadelphia won their second Super Bowl title. Michael Vick is your Super Bowl MVP. You see all the award winners there. Tom Brady, NFL MVP. Uh, hey, that's credit to Madden. It's, you know, it's window dressing, but it's a nice feature. So this was the offseason in real life that Philadelphia did trade Donovan McNabb. And uh, I was going to try to max it. I didn't feel like, I, I, in the sense of realism and keeping it fair, getting a first-round pick for a guy that just got benched and he's like 32 is crazy. But the Buffalo Bills, Trent Edwards was their quarterback. He's a 69. And I was able to get pretty good value. A two this year and a three this year and a future two for Donovan McNabb. I feel like that's pretty... You know, appropriate value for a guy that still had, what was it, like 13 touchdowns, three picks this year. So I'm happy with that, being able to move on from Don McNabb. Got his Super Bowl ring with the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, now we can kind of move into whatever this ride is with Michael Vick as our starting quarterback. Free agency, we have a lot of money. 98 million bucks. Obviously, some of these contracts are going to be coming up sooner than later. There's just... There's not, not a crazy amount of, of value here. A lot of veterans for the most part. One player I did want to sign because I think he's one of the most underrated Eagles ever is Evan Mathis, who's there as a X factor. It's just, you know, it doesn't work with the landscape of a team because either guard spot were good. Harriman's 82-27. Don't even replace that. And obviously in real life, this is where Sean, Sean Andrews kind of had his struggles off the field. And there we could kick it, Evan Mathis. But right now, Andrews is an absolute beast. So uh, as, as weird as it said, you know, kind of feels to have almost $100 million in cap and not sign anyone, I, I think it's going to be better spent trying to retain our own players than it is to hit the open market, at least here in year one. So we're going to end this video on the 2010 draft where you guys can let me know where do we need to go with this draft selection. Knowing that we do have a lot more ammunition now, we have two twos, two threes, so we can kind of, you know, if we have to trade up in future rounds, we can. Maybe I should have Pose that question before the draft started, but to keep it fair, you know, it'd be a little bit cheesy to try to trade up right away. And look at that, that second round pick at five is very, very good as well. So we go into this understanding our team weaknesses, where we want to get younger, where we want to get better. I think right tackle on the offensive side of the ball, maybe more explosive playmaker at tight end. No shots fired at Brent Selleck, but it is what it is. Uh, I also think third wide receiver, absolutely need third wide receiver. Some that we can pair in there with Deshaun Jackson and Jeremy Macklin. Um... Badly, you know, uh, we only have two wide two receivers on the roster. It is what it is. So wide receiver is a top need. Go into the defensive side. I think we could get a playmaker at defensive tackle to replace Broderick Bunkley. Get an edge rusher opposed Trent Cole. Um, corner wouldn't be bad. Outside linebacker generally wouldn't be bad. Hell, even getting a free safety wouldn't be bad. So understanding that those are kind of our needs. Here's the draft board for you guys to give me some players to pick from. So we're saying... Uh, wide receiver, and there's not much there. We have drafted Golden Tate before. It is pretty clear and obvious that that's the selection we, we could go, considering we need wide receivers. Because we've at this point in time, we've used Golden Tate in previous rebuilds. We've used Emmanuel Sanders in previous rebuilds. Um, a little bit later on in, the, in this draft, Raleigh Cooper's there. Antonio Brown is available in the seventh round. So I don't know if you guys can give a scenario where we draft Antonio Brown and it's not cheesy and it's not OC4s. Of course he'd draft Antonio Brown when he does the Eagles rebuild. If you guys can think of a way that we should you can handle AB because that's really the only wide receiver that I kind of want that we haven't used yet in a rebuild, let me know in the comment section below how that makes sense. Uh, Gronk's here at tight end. We also have Jimmy Graham. You know, if we want to... Hey, that's a... Uh, that's a pretty good get. We said, not actually thinking about this draft, that we could get more explosive at tight end and, and no shots at, at Brent Selleck. And Rob Gronkowski would very much be that solution. Uh, Saffold at right tackle to get over Stacey Andrews. He's an option there in the second round. Uh, defensively, we want another defensive end. We have Lamar Houston. I'm Philly in real life drafted Daniel Tio Nesham. Rest in peace. Well, Lamar Houston is a scheme fit, even though 6'3", 305 is absolutely not like a 4'3 end. Uh, we have Carlos Dunlap, though. That'd be a great get. Uh, that wouldn't be a ridiculous pick in the first round. It'd be an edge rusher playing the opposing side of Trent Cole. I'd like that. A little bit Gator bias on my Eagles team. D-tackle, we got Linval Joseph here in the second round. A little bit later on, we do have Geno Atkins and Al Woods as veterans um, in today's NFL. But once upon a time, these guys here slipped a little bit in the cracks. And at their peak, especially Geno Atkins was one of the best, most underrated pass rushing D-tackles 
in the NFL. Uh, we got Bowman. Maybe we can get him in the second round, potentially. I mean, we need outside linebackers. There's not a lot of value there. Uh, Spikes and Daryl Washington. We got Sean Lee. That could be weird. You know, he's mostly known for his time with the Dallas. Well, only known for his time with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, secondary, we're, we're kind of fine. Free safety, Morgan Burnett, Major Wright. Sure. They could all be in a somewhat nice pick. So I literally, literally, we could go anywhere, fellas. I'm, I'm thinking if I had to make a short list, it would be if we could figure out the best non-cheese way to get Antonio Brown, that'd be great. And if you want to get a lot of screen time in the next video, whoever comes up with the best justification to maybe getting me Antonio Brown here, I will do it. If not, we got Gronk as a legitimate option, Saffold as a legitimate option, Dunlap as a legitimate option, Linval Joseph, I wouldn't hate that. We could just say screw it and reach for Navarro Bowman because outside linebacker is such a big need. Let me know in the comment section below where your Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles are going in the first round. Also, keep in mind that we have two seconds. So if you want to kind of map out how we should handle these early rounds, these premier picks in the draft, by all means, go in. Do you have a good idea of how we should handle Antonio Brown? Go in. But that will do it for me here today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.